Listen to ABC News, AGT Live. Sisters and brothers of America, it fills my heart with joy unspeakable to rise in response to the warm and cordial welcome which you have given us. I thank you in the name of the most ancient order of monks in the world. I thank you in the name of the mother of religion. And I thank you in the name of the millions and millions of Hindu people of all passage and sects. My thanks also to some of the speakers on this platform who, referring to the delegates from the Orient, have told you that these men from far-off nations may well claim the honor of bearing to different lands the idea of a toleration. I'm proud to belong to a religion which has taught the world about tolerance and universal acceptance. We believe not only in universal toleration, but we accept all religions as two. I'm proud to belong to a nation which has sheltered the persecuted and the refugees of all religions and all nations of the earth. I'm proud to tell you that we have gathered in our bosom the purest remnant of the Israelites who came to the southern India and took refuge with us in the very year in which their holy temple was shattered to pieces by Roman tyranny. I'm proud to belong to the religion which has sheltered and is still fostering the remnant of the grand Jorastrian nation. I'll tell to you, brethren, a few lines from a hymn which I remember to have repeated from my earliest boyhood which is every day repeated by millions of human beings. As the different streams having three sources in different places all mingle their water in the sea. So, O oh Lord, the different paths which men take through different tendencies, various though they appear, cooked or straight, all lead to thee. The present convention, which is one of the most august assemblies ever held is in itself a vindication, a declaration to the world of the wonderful doctrine preached in the Gita. Whosoever comes to me, to whatsoever form I reach him, all men are struggling through paths which in the end lead to me. Sectarianism, bigotry, and his horrible descendant, fanaticism, have long possessed this beautiful earth. They have filled the earth with violence, drenched it often and often with human blood, destroyed civilization, and sent whole nations to despair. Had it not been for these horrible demons, human society would be far more advanced than it is now. But their time is come, and I fervently hope that the bell that tolled this morning in honor of this convention may be the death knell of all fanaticism of all persecutions, with the sword or with the pen, and of all the uncharitable feelings between persons wending their way to the same goal. Concluding address, Chicago, 27th September, 1893. Concluding address, Chicago, 27th September, 1893. The world's parliament of religions has become an accomplished fact. And the merciful Father has helped those who labored to bring it into existence and the crown to its success their most unselfish labor. My thanks to those noble souls whose large hearts and love of truth first dreamed this wonderful dream and then realized it. My thanks to the shower of liberal sentiments that has overflowed this platform. My thanks to these enlightened audience for their uniform kindness to me and for their appreciation of every thought that tends to smooth the fiction of religions. A few jarring notes were heard from time to time in this harmony. My special thanks to them, for they have, by their striking contrast, made general harmony the sweeter. Much has been said of their common ground of religious unity. I'm not going just now to venture my own theory, but if anyone here hopes that this unity will come by the triumph of any one of the religions and the destruction of the others, to him I say, Brother, 
Yours is an impossible hell. Do I wish that the Christian would become Hindu? God forbid. Do I wish that the Hindu or Buddhist would become Christian? God forbid. The seed is put in the ground, and art and air and water are placed around it. Does the seed become the art, or the air, or the water? Now, it becomes a plant. It develops after the law of its own ground, assimilates the air, the art, and the water, converts them into plant substance, and grows into a plant. Similar is the case with religion. The Christian is not to become a Hindu or a Buddhist, nor a Hindu or a Buddhist to become a Christian. But each must assimilate the spirit of the others and yet preserve his individuality and grow according to his own law of growth. If the parliament of religions has shown anything to the world, it is this. It has proved to the world that holiness, purity, and charity are not the exclusive possessions of any charge in the world, and that every system has produced men and women of the most exalted character. In the face of this evidence, if anybody dreams of the exclusive survival of his own religion and the destruction of the others, I pity him from the bottom of my heart and point out to him that upon the banner of every religion will soon be written in spite of resistance. Hell and not fight, assimilation and not destruction, harmony and peace and not dissension. Thank you.